you are lucky. My partner is checking out his skin. Yes, yeah, skincare. The thing is, um, having beautiful, supple, fresh skin. Once you begin to describe it like that, that's a woman's skin you are describing. No, no, no. Even, even men. Even men can have good skin. Yes. But the thing is that good skin doesn't just come about. A lot mm. of work goes into it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Out of the 37 trillion cells, right? When it comes to your skin care, mm. your lifestyle has a lot to do with it. You know, mm. all these things we talk about on this lifestyle segment, they all seem to be intertwined. Mm -mm. They don't seem to be. They are. They are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Iqua comes and says that your ball of pounded yam should not be more than more one than this. tennis ball. Yeah. And then you must add plenty of vegetables to it. And there is hardly any guest that has come on this program and has not talked about food. Your hair, food. Your, your skin. Your skin, food. Your blood, food. Exercise, food. So Iqua didn't your say eyes, at that time food. that the vegetable part of it is actually... Contributing to giving you nice, supple, ah, ah, skin opening, yele. You see? Ole. Female skin. Not this one that would have gone to exercise and... Uh... They say skin, man, yele. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, so, so what makes beautiful skin? After mm. all, the skin is the largest organ of the body. So it also needs care and nurture and all that. But what do I know? Dr. Cynthia ABA is a consultant physician, dermatologist, and fellow of the West African College of Physicians with specialist training in clinical dermatology, aesthetic dermatology, and dermatological surgery. Good morning. Only you. It's good to be Only here. Only you. <laughs> Dr. Ebi, thank you. Only you. Well, thank you for having me here. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, <sighs> you know, she's talked about the skin being the largest organ in the body. And I noticed that there are federal governments, parts of the skin, there are local governments, parts of the skin, <laughs> there are state government parts of the skin. Because it, why are you laughing? <laughs> Please, which one is the federal government? I don't know. She will tell us. Oh. Because the quality of skin on my face is not the same, Abby, on my arm, right? Uh, you're right. <laughs> and the one under my feet. my foot, yes, they are different. Yes, they are harder. So it's different. Mm -hmm. Which one is the local government? She will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> So I would say, um, I would just go expatiate a bit further and say that besides the skin being the largest organ, which we, we know, it's also the most conspicuous parts of the body. Mm. So whenever, why, you, why it's very important and crucial also to take care of the skin is that most of the time when you have skin, um, internal diseases of the other parts of the system, not everyone might know. But you know, the skin being cons conspicuous, everyone is asking, oh, what's wrong with your skin? What happened to you here? Um, what happened, you know, it's something that everyone notices, okay? So in taking care of the skin, basically, it's not just pertaining to just the females. Even the men is very important as well. What are the things, our lifestyle choices, like you said, also the daily things we do to our skin, daily skin care practices. So in saying lifestyle, okay, what we drink, Water. We know that water is good for life. Water is very good. We need to drink en enough water to keep our skin properly hydrated, proper properly moisturized as well, okay? In terms of diets, a lot of fruits and vegetables, carrots, broccoli, you know, they're very good for the skin. Well, thank you for okay? that one. Don't Don't be saying broccoli. We don't have broccoli in Nigeria. <laughs> so the one that we have here. Okay, the vegetables. Whatever we have it ugu. Is, whether it's ugu, fruit, you know, they are so expensive. Love... Let's come down to Nigeria. Well, carrots are not expensive. Oh, really? No, carrots are not expensive. Really? No. It's okay. Now you so, can hear. So also... What we find a lot as dermatologists, not everyone knows about. I mean, there's so much misinformation outside. For some people, taking care of the skin, you know, they use all sorts of harsh chemicals. Some people use medicated soaps, antiseptic soaps, soaps for daily having their bath. But what these soaps actually do, 
is that the skin has this acidic mantle that, I mean, prevents um, bacteria and all sorts of infection. These soaps are usually too harsh for the skin. Slow down. Please. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> Okay. They prepared themselves, myself I got properly. you there. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, to protect yourself, you buy antiseptic soap and medicated soap to protect yourself. Now you are saying... <laughs> it's not necessary. It is not. <laughs> it is not. Because your skin, the pH, the acidic mantles already prevents you from having infection. So why do we have bacteria? it in the market? So... That is why I'm here today. We, keep, Market we would must keep sell. Edu educating, you know. Mm -hmm. So normally, a lot of people go using the harsh medicated soaps, antiseptic soap, disrupting the acidic mantle, which is meant to be protective to the skin. Mm -hmm. Also, extremes of water, bath water, very hot water, that will strip the skin off the natural oils, you know. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you find is moisturizing, moisturizing, moisturizing. We keep on emphasizing on that. Sometimes you go out, you see some people, ashy skin, you know, you must keep feeding the skin. You must moisturize, moisturize okay. the skin. One of the things that is also very helpful is moisturizing when the skin is a bit wet. So we have this three to five minutes rule. When you get out of the shower, just pat a bit and then leave some water on your skin. Mm. You moisturize so that the, moist, so that the water locks in so you're locking in moisture, kind of. So that mm. way it's better. Cold will catch person. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. So, I have so. noticed that many people are going back to the land, so to speak. Many more people are using Oshedudu black soap. And many more are using shea butter, Ori. Are those of any benefit to the skin? Yes. Shea butter is very good for the skin keeps the skin well hydrated. I mean, it's, it keeps the skin well hydrated, you know. Mm -hmm. Or should you do in its natural form? Yes. I have no problems with um, using Oshedudu and um, shea butter. Why? Because for the, for the Oshedudu that you find the, in the packs, you know, the ones that are sold in supermarkets, there's been some con kind of control check yeah. on those mm. items as opposed okay. to the homemade ingredients. Mm. I mean, in that way, the homemade um, ingredients, homemade black soaps, are we sure that the right proportion of ingredients are, are put in these soaps? Mm. Have, they, have they had any quality control checks as opposed to the ones in the supermarkets? I'm okay with that. We use shea butter a lot in dermatology mm. as well, just that it must be made right. Okay. Madam, um, you, you just talked talked about soaps now in terms of for, for skin care and all. What are the things people should look out for when they are buying um, soaps with which to bathe and the ones with which to wash their hands? There are those who cannot afford to buy one soap for the face, one soap for the hand, one soap for the body and all of that. What should people be looking out for? Okay, so um, in terms of looking out for I would say first, like I said earlier, when you go to the supermarket, you can avoid soaps that have um, me medicated soaps. Mm. Those ones will dry out the skin. So simple toilet soaps, I don't really want to go Mention into names, brands, but yeah. things that have aloe vera, a lot of times for those with sensitive skin, they do well with bland soaps without the scents. So fragrance-free soaps for those with sensitive skin. Otherwise, aloe vera is good. You can look for things like that in your soap, okay? Um, coconut oil, some of them put some shea butter in it, but where you go on the shelves and you see things like lightening soap, toning soap, clarifying soap, you need to be careful. Clarifying mm. soap? Yes. What is they it come in all, so Whitening, whitening soap, brightening soap. Brightening. So yes. I'm not particularly going to call names, but no, don't I mean, call names, yes. But so. Clarifying soap. Yes. Is it beavers? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have um, soaps like that off the sh um, on the shelves. You okay. know? Other than soaps, I mean, you've talked about fruits and vegetables and all of that, and you've also talked about you've you've spaded uh, moisturizers. What other things can people use? Okay, is it for their skin. Yeah, the skin care. Okay, skin. so so for clear skin, they can also in terms of the moisturizers too, we must be careful. So when we say clear skin, some people 
have coined a name. Some of them call it glowing lotions, lightning lotions. Okay, so for toning, toning they say lotions, it's not bleaching, it's yes, toning. so bleaching. They use it interchangeably, mm. but they all mean to the general population. It means basically the same thing. I mean, to the general population, we know that is for bleaching. toning, bleaching. So we say, Ouch. yes. So for those creams particularly, what, what would tell them to do? A lot of them, even for the kids, they get the triple action creams as well. They are the triple action creams, which they mix with their body cream. Also, there's the new organic rave. And they say that, oh, we are using organic products. A lot of those organic products are mixed with steroids. So I think that... Mixed with what? Steroids. Some of them. So they so get we need high to be, just by rubbing cream. Ouch. Yes. So by rubbing that. So we need to be careful when we hear organic. I think it's the right of everyone to know, okay, what ingredients are there? Have there been any quality control? There are so many of them being sold. Social media shops, you know, so so those are the things that we should re also look at, out for when we're buying lotion. So you want the lotions to be as planned as possible. Like I said, um, 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 vitamin A, look for those of them that have um, coconut oil, those of those that have shea butter, you know, you see them lanolin, parabens, so those ingredients are still okay. How good are baby lotions and creams for adults? So, um, for adults, baby lotions and creams, some people use them. They're mild, especially if you have sensitive skin. There are a, a number of brands that are okay, mm -hmm. but they've been, they're suitable usually for children and not for adults. But adults can still use it. It's mild, especially the mild ones. Most of them are mild anyway. So How okay. will you know if you have sensitive skin? Okay. So if you have sensitive skin at first, you I will know. Okay. <laughs> because I have. So, so usually <laughs> a lot of people with sensitive skin, some of them have dry skin as well. Besides dr having dry skin, they react to almost, I mean, a lot of ingredients, especially those in, um, um, creams or scents, perfumes. Mm. So things that have alcohol in them, they can also react to soaps that have um, alcohol, scented soaps. So you, you know if you have sensitive skin, dryness, sometimes they are itchy, especially when they use um, things that um, are, are too harsh mm. for them. Are there peculiarities for those who have dark skin or light skin or bright skin and all of that? Are there peculiarities? Mm, not really. Okay. Mm, for light skin, dark skin, is it in terms of skin care now? Yeah. No, I or think sensitivity. once. So yes, sensitivity. Yes, of course. Those people who have sensi sensitive skin, it's not one stone. One stone doesn't fit all. So for those ones, um, they need to. We always say that to consult the the dermatologist, of course, to tailor tailor a skincare product mm. for them. For them, most of the la time, we use as opposed to using lotions. A lot of time, lotions don't really do too well for them. They use of more of emollients, creams, the thicker ones, you know. And also, um, a lot of them might do with some oil in their bath water to keep their skin more moisturized. And in terms of, we just try to warn them as well that when the weather is getting like the Hamatan weather, mm -hmm. get prepared. They could put a drop of oil in their bath water, make sure they moisturize at least twice a day for some of them, you know. And usually things will sense scents and all that tend to irritate their skin a lot more. So what we, part does sleep play in this? So I would say that sleep um, plays a very important role as well. At least it's recommended that about seven to nine hours of sleep. Nine? Yes, it's, it's very, very good. I mean, Ouch. it gives a glowy skin. So besides that, even exercise too. I mean, about three times a week if you can, 30 minutes. It's, it's very important as why well. Do you, why are you looking like thinking. you're suspecting me? <laughs> so guilty it's... conscious? No, she's looking at me. Okay. <laughs> because you are feeling like, guilty. There's something you're not doing. doing <laughs> so sleep, not sleep doing. is very important. So it's all, it's a holistic approach mm. as opposed to just saying skincare. Your day-to-day -day time, your, your, um, what, uh, your, what you do every day, lifestyle, your, your lifestyle and all of that. Okay. So, Madam, yeah. okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, some time ago, there was a campaign, I think it was by NAFDAC, that women should stop using bleaching creams with a particular 
um, chemical, hydroquinone. Does that suggest that other bleaching creams that do not contain hydroquinone are good for the skin? So the ingredients we look for, that doesn't mean that. Why it was really, um, that was really emphasized. Of course, we know that hydroquinone, especially in high percentages, we, it's, it predisposes a lot of people to, you know, damage, it damages the skin, predisposes to skin cancers as well. So I would say, I would just give you a little insight. Um, we have a protective, the melanin is meant to protect the skin. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, um, we used to see more of skin cancers in the Caucasians, the white people. But now we tend to see a, lot, a few skin cancers here in black. And why is this? Um, a lot of people, even with using these creams, you know, it's sold every... I mean, quite a, people have access to hydroquinone and all of that. Also, one very important aspect, which a lot of people do, is the use of sunscreen. It is very important. So I would say that everybody ideally should use a sunscreen between SPF 30 to 50. Mm. It's very important. So hydroquinone... Black people should be using sunscreen? Yes. That is why I said before. Black people, white people, everybody should be using sunscreen. Okay. So in terms of um, the, um, what Navdak said about um, skin, the hydroquinone, um, hydroquinone is... It's, it's actually pre predisposes to skin cancers, like I said. And so, then the other so agents as well. Does it mean well. that it's okay to use other bleaching creams? That no, it's contain. not. All of that. I don't. It was just emphasized hydroquinone, though, okay. but other bleaching creams as well. So, there so are bleaching other, cream is a no-no. Bleaching cream is certainly a no-no. Allow me to stoke a fire. Um, tattoos. They don't come on the teeth. They come on the skin. How advisable are they in whatever dosage in the human body or, the, or on the human skin? So I would say that tattoos, I won't say completely no, no. Some people... But you wouldn't recommend But them. I wouldn't recommend it. Why? Because, for example... If you were to say dyes, what they do, they inject that, they use dyes for tattoos and it could cause some reaction. So some people might have a, an allergic reaction to those dyes. But can you really say who would have an allergic reaction or not? You can't really tell. So for me, I would not recommend it. Though I know some people have it done for cosmetic reasons, um, you know, for aesthetic reasons and all of that. But I would not recommend it but because of the dyes. Sorry? Or is there a way they can be removed? Yes, they can be removed gradually with laser. Laser. Laser? Yes. It's painful to put on. It's complicated. No, nah, it's but... painful to put off again. Anyway, you, you said something the other time about nah, every, every human being using sunscreens. Yes. But fair people, mm. any, you know, I, I, I'm very particular about those you know, different classes of people with different classes of skin. Any peculiarities for them in that regard? Everybody, even the fair people and the dark people, because what this, especially at times like we, we're exposed almost every day to ultraviolet rays. One of the things the ultra, part of the things ultraviolet rays does, it causes photo aging. It makes people look older than they are. Also, it could predispose to skin cancers. Other things it does, it causes dark some areas of your skin to look darker than the rest. You know, so what the sunscreen does actually is to help protect us from these rays mm -hmm. and it is very important. I think everybody should have a sunscreen in their bags. How, how, should, okay. how, how vulnerable are people? I know we have just about a minute. Um, how, how, what, how vulnerable are we as a people, black Africans, Nigerians in particular, to skin conditions that are unfavorable? So Skin cancer. So is it skin cancers or general skin conditions? ETC. So we are vulnerable, so this depends on what practices or what path we lifestyles. choose to lifestyles. Okay. So like we said earlier, in terms of soaps, choose rightly. In terms of the water, creams. in terms of the creams, you know, what you drink, what you eat. Because part of the very important things that to emphasize on is that these creams and soaps, 
in you not choosing the right ones, they can actually disrupt the normal acid mantle, which is meant to be protective, to um, prevent bacteria and all of that from getting into the skin. So by the time I mean, individuals use all sorts of soaps, all sorts of creams, they're not properly guided, they predispose the skin to certain all sorts of infections. I think the next okay? time, the next conversation we're going to have, the next time we have you here, if you will allow yourself to come again, is to talk about these conditions. Yes. So that, that at least people will know what to do when about them and how they caused it if they did. Because there, there are those who believe Michael Jackson, for instance, didn't cause his own. It came naturally, although, you know, it did. And the number of people might have the same conditions. For now, we have to thank you uh, for being here. She's a um, consultant, physician, dermatologist, fellow of the West Africa College of Physicians with specialist training in clinical dermatology, aesthetic dermatology, and dermatological surgery. Only Dr. Your Cynthia. Thank you. Only one person. It's all dermatology, mm. but different I, kinds of dermatology. I like that aesthetic. Maybe we'll come back to it. <laughs> Thank you very much for aesthetic. having me. That is a... Uh... Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Ra. See you next time. All right. In yeah. the meantime, we'll be right back with the home stretch in just a moment. <laughs>